What's up guys, it's Crash, and I don't know if I'm more excited to be making a range video for you guys today, or that a video game could potentially actually be getting suppressors right. I know they're both kind of big deals, and I wanna talk a little bit about them today and kind of demonstrate a mechanic for you, to you that's been incorrect in shooter video games for quite a while. And I wanna talk about Road to Vostok, which is the game that I think could be getting these right. And uh, the other day, I guess if you guys haven't seen Road to Vostok, it looks to be a really cool upcoming game. Uh, that's going to be a survival single player game developed by a single developer over in finland and if you guys haven't seen it i highly recommend checking out the website you can see the devlog where he is chronicling the game from start to finish as well as checking it out on steam and there is a free demo you can hop into and kind of run around and feel but he's adding new features new things to this game every day and what really caught my attention was uh the other day over on twitter he posted some new bullet sounds where you can actually finally thank goodness you can hear the difference between subsonic and supersonic ammo and bullet travel. So check these out. So at first, when you hear those, you're like, Crash, why is this a big deal? Well, as someone who's actually used suppressors in real life, it's a huge deal. And I'm hoping I can actually demonstrate that for you guys today. And that is kind of what I'm really trying to dial in is that uh, the crack of the sound barrier, when those supersonic rounds crack the sound barrier, you can really hear that as well as subsonic on the flip side, incredibly, incredibly quiet and much more quieter than supersonic ammo. And the firearm that I'm gonna use today to hopefully demonstrate that for you guys is a Henry Model X. This one, this particular one, um, is chambered in uh, 357 mag and 38 special, and it makes it the perfect round uh, to test this out, in my opinion, because we can shoot 38 specials, which are generally loaded to subsonic, mine are as well, and then we can also put a 357 mag through here, traveling at much faster speeds, a little higher pressures, and you guys will hear that bullet travel distance. At the firearm, lever, lever actions, hard to say, are uh, really quiet because when you shoot them, the action stays closed, not letting any gases or sound escape until you're ready, until you've already fired the round. And so they're a really fun gun to run a suppressor on for that reason. It's still a repeater, but it's also quiet because it stays closed when you shoot it. And um, yeah, the other thing about this one in particular is I have a Romeo uh, Sig Romeo 5 red dot sight on the top of it. And um, yeah, let me see if we can, we'll do some 38 specials through here first to see how quiet those are and then shoot the 357 mag and you guys will definitely hear uh, the change in the bullet sound. So first we'll shoot two of the 38 specials. Really quiet, <laughs> a lot of fun. Um, now let's shoot one of each. We'll shoot the 38 special followed by the 357. So I alternate loaded these, so you'll be able to hear 38 special. Now listen for the crack in the 357. Crazy different. 38 special. 357. Massive, massive difference in audio. That's why I really like shooting 38 specials. They're a lot of fun, they're quiet. But anyway guys, that's all I have for you today. Keep an eye on Road to Vostok and hopefully games will continue to get this mechanic right because I think if you have a mechanic where subsonic and supersonic ammo really do behave like they do in real life, there's actually some you know risk to reward in actually choosing to run subsonic ammo. It's quieter, but then you have the trade-offs of a little bit more bullet drop, a little slower speed, and it actually correlates to real life, which any kind, anytime you have these little details in games, I think it's pretty cool. So thank you guys for watching. Hope to see you later.